All right, we're on video number three for this uh, lead ID delta process. So just uh, make sure the previous video, you should have had it, this written down. And we're on, now we're on step five. So if uh, this doesn't make sense to you, then I wouldn't even bother watching this because this is um, a video in part of a series with uh, two other previous videos. Okay, step five is label T4 and T9. Basically by rotating the process 120 degrees. Rotating process 120 degrees. So let's look at what we have labeled and what we have drawing. Um, I'm going to do a new drawing just to keep it clean. So bear with me. Come on, red pen. There we go, close enough. Okay, so let's review what we have labeled to date. So we started out with the D, I, and C corners, and we had a process to figure that out. And then we just finished in step four to figure out where the H and E terminals are, and then by default, we know that F and B are here. The only thing that we don't know is if this is G or A, or if this is G or A, but if we rotate the process, so in other words, if we put 15 volts, let's say across here, and it doesn't matter if we do it on group two or group three, but I have to pick something. So if I do this, it's gonna be the same physics. So think about what I said in the last video here. If I put 15 volts, and let's make a voltage here, source here, it's gonna induce a voltage in these four other windings and which is going to be the highest voltage do you think? And again, think about the pen method. If I put it across here, the highest voltage should be then across those windings there. Now, we've already done this one, so we don't really need to do that. We're just looking at this one. So let's just do our little horizontal diagram of the windings. So the winding, in question here is the D center one and that had A and G on each side. So I'm applying voltage to B and H and now I'm measuring um, these terminals. So A to D I measured 2.1 and then D to G I measured 5.7 and hopefully you guys are ahead of me on this and you already know what terminal to label this. So this one I'm hoping you are all on board saying, yeah, this is going to be the highest voltage, so this has to be the G terminal. Again, we can't move this D terminal. It stays. It's our benchmark. It's the center. All we are looking for is this G or A. And it can't be A because that would make this 2.1 volts. And uh, we're looking for the highest voltage across here because we had the source on this side. That would also mean then this would be the A terminal. And now we have all nine leads labeled. And the next step is just to connect it. And um, I'm going to show you that in a, a new drawing here. But we're basically done all the labeling. If you want, you can do a redundancy check and move the, the source voltage across E and F. And then you can double check that make sure D and A are a higher voltage than D and G. And make sure that B to I is a higher measured voltage than H to I. And that should um, prove true. Now, if you find that something's wrong and that's not the case, really you have to start the whole process from step one again. Because some anything can go wrong. Maybe you mixed up and D wasn't your center point and you know, maybe A was your center point. Or maybe in step four, um, for whatever reason, um, you know, you miss these. What I find uh, happens if you don't write neat enough, or and that, as you can see in my writing, could be the case. Sometimes my E and C could look the same, or an E and F can look the same, or a G and C and so forth. When I'm looking at students, um, a lot of times when they have problems, there's going to be two of the same letter. 
you know, I'll see an H here and an H here, and automatically I know that there's something wrong. So keep that in mind when you're doing this process. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this information over to another paper. And I think you guys are pretty solid with all the coloring and the phases, so I'm going to just make this really quick and just redraw it. Okay. Because when you're doing this in the class or out in the field, it doesn't have to be neat. It just has to be neat enough to be accurate. Okay, so this is all the terminals that we came up for from all the processes that we've just did. Now all I just want to explain is how to hook this thing up. So generally, we want to hook line 1 up to T1, or the D in this case. We want to hook line 2 up to the I in this case, and we want to hook line 3 up to the C. Now, does it really matter if I hook line up to I, or line 1 up to I, and line 2 up to D, or something like that? No. It, it'll still run. You won't blow the motor up. It might run in the opposite direction, but that's, uh, that's another class talking about that. What we do want to do, though, is um, we have access to 240 volts. Now, this motor that I'm looking at, and again, this is all based upon a, a real motor. It's not just hypothetical. Um, I, I didn't make up any of these numbers. I just wrote down what I measured from a real motor. This motor was a 230 volt slash 460 volt dual voltage, uh, well, delta motor. In the classroom, we have access to 240 volts. And actually, you can make this motor run on 208. I wouldn't suggest that um, w under full load, but just to make it run, 208 volts would be fine. So we're going to do the low voltage connection on this. And here's how you do the low voltage connection. D is going to connect to B and E. I is going to connect to A and E. And did I say E last time? That I meant F. And then C is going to connect to G and H. So that's how you're going to make those connections. And then D, um, as I said earlier, is going to connect to L1, I is going to connect to L2, and C is going to connect to L3. You make all that connections, you turn on the motor, and if you did everything right, it won't growl, it won't short circuit, it'll just purr like it was meant to run. And that is the end of the three-phase, uh, nine-lead, delta lead ID process. Okay, now we still have Y to do, and we're done with this process. See you next time.